All right, back in the 17th century, when French Canadian fur traders first encountered the Native Americans of the Intermountain West, Northwest, they referred to them as the Nez Perce, or the pierced nose, which is odd since, well, they weren't really a tribe known to pierce their noses. They called themselves lots of other things, not that, one of them the, being the Nimupu, a name that translates simply to the people. The people once covered an area more than 17 million acres, following the seasons and the buffalo and the salmon across what is now part of Montana, Oregon, Washington, and almost all of Idaho. Today, they are confined to a reservation of about 750,000 acres in North Idaho, with the headquarters being in Lapwai. And over the generations, they haven't just lost a lot of territory, but they've also lost the distinguished fluency of their language. One of the last of those speakers, a lifelong speaker, they call them, was the grandfather of Bessie Walker. He was a level 10 on the fluency guidelines, the top level, and there weren't too many around who could speak at his level. Well, Bessie hopes to change that. Four years ago, she started, she started this organization. It's a nonprofit to promote, protect, and revitalize the Ninupu. The, she calls it the Hipithnu. That's the name of the organization. It's to help promote the language and culture. And step one, they say, is to start early. And together with the Language Conservancy and a grant from the Steel Reese Foundation, they just released a first ever children's book written in the Ninupu, the Ninupu language. It's a Ituwitsa Hatuwitnim. It's called Ahatuwitsa Atkaim Wasim, which means I love you because you're you. Itko Kemka Awitsa Ka Piwakalti Botswitsa. So the book is part of a series too, though we have other ones that are coming out because, like I said, we're trying to build up our curriculum for an immersion school of our own to where, you know, because there's no place like that. Why is it important to you to, to keep this going and also to start it at a young age? Well, because, yeah, for one, there's no more highly fluent, distinguished speakers left, you know, and it's important to me, to me because like my grandpa, you know, he didn't really have anybody to speak to. And but that was just how it was, you know, um, there was this forced experience that my grandparents experienced, you know, with the boarding schools and the cutting off of the cultures. And so he didn't like that era. They didn't want to teach their children because they didn't want to put their children in harm's way mm. or, you know, shamed out or feeling all these feelings that they had to experience. And that's, a, that's like, that's what we, a lot of us have to get past too, you know, because there's this, this shame that goes attached with it. You know, my grandparents were shamed out to not learn the language, to give it away. And then here we are wanting to, we're ashamed because we don't know our language, you know, because that's yeah. where I come from. And I was just ashamed. And that's, I guess that's kind of the root of my, of my drive. I'm proud to be um, Nimipu, Walaupu, um, but it's just, you know, getting past that, you know, a lot of people aren't past that, that phase of where, you know, they're, they're not ashamed anymore. What do you like about this book? That's how kids talk, you know, they're just silly. And I, I've, I've been around kids for a long time and got lots of nieces, nephews, and um, had a big family. So I feel like I have a lot of influences from that too. You know, it's, I really like being around kids. Where do you see, like, what would be the ultimate goal for you with this for, book and this school? Yeah, for the school just to thrive, you know, like for me, like I said, it, it's, it's a good shame, you know, and I know we all feel like that, especially on the reservation, you know, it's not, it's not that easy. And so just trying to bring some good feelings back. I had to was a good shame, she says. The Steel Reese Foundation, by the way, is a charitable trust created to help Native nations in Idaho and Montana. They've been working with Head Start for years to help with the Nimipu fluency. And, and that goal of an immersion school, Bessie says she hopes to have it up and running within a year. So she's pretty, uh, well, she's really going to go for it. And they plan to have room for seven to eight kids there. And they need people who not only know the language, but they also have to have teaching skills as well.